Hi, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is Dr. Lefkoff here with another installment of IRGN 424 Corporate Finance here at the Graduate School of International Relations and Pacific Studies at UC San Diego. Uh, and in the second part of this installment on immunizing a bond portfolio, I'm going to show you how to actually use the Excel solver to match the duration of the portfolio to the duration of your liabilities, which we had calculated in the previous installment. Uh, so just a quick note, I am going to be flipping back and forth between the portfolio and the liability sheet. Uh, in fact, you'll notice these values in these brick red columns, these are actually linked directly to the liability sheet here. I pulled the duration from cell C4 in the liability sheet. This is from cell E2 and C2. Um, so just for your reference. Uh, up here, I'm going to use these cells to actually control the change in the yield to maturity as we allow it to flow. We're going to actually allow the user to control the basis point change. A uh, basis point is one hundredth of a percentage point in the yield, um, making our calculation for the change in yield to just be the number of basis points divided by 10,000. And we have also, uh, as we had in our liabilities exercise, we, where we have here compute at least for the first order changes using the duration. Um, our estimated changes uh, and the uh, associated errors. <clears throat> so uh, you'll notice we have what it looks like to be two bond portfolios chosen here. Uh, in fact, we're only going to really use one bond portfolio. Okay, I'm going to use this first bond portfolio. Now the second bond portfolio down here I've referred to as a counterfactual bond portfolio. This is going to be the same portfolio, uh, but the interest rate we're actually going to allow to flow. So for the meantime, uh, the interest rate in this portfolio is equal to the interest rate in the above portfolio plus this change in yield. So if I was to change the yield by, say, 50 basis points, you'll notice the yields on these bonds go up by 0.5 relative to the yields originally. Okay, so we allow the yield to float. Let's also calculate the price of these bonds using Excel's formula here. So settlement date, maturity date, coupon rate, yield. Redemption value was 100 and frequency 2, just like we had done in the other exercise. And let's also do the same for duration of each of these assets. And, and uh, what we've done now is we've allowed the price and the duration actually to fluctuate as we change the yield. So again, if I have a 50 basis point change in the yield, you'll notice uh, these values have shifted a little bit from what they were originally, at least these two bonds that have more than one payment left on them. Um, so um, what we're going to do next is we're going to actually calculate the optimal weights in the initial portfolio to match the duration of our liability. So let's do this here. Uh, recall the duration of the portfolio is calculated by um, taking the sum product of the portfolio weights. So note here, um, that the duration of the portfolio is just the weighted average of each of the durations of the asset weighted by their value in the portfolio. So we're going to solve for these weights here that match the portfolio's duration to this 9.26 year duration of the liability. So the portfolio duration, again, is just the sum product of its durations with the weights that we're going to have Excel choose for us. Uh, the sum of the weights is just the sum of the weights category. We know one constraint should be that should equal one. On the total expense, we're going to just sum up the amount of money spent, which is going to be determined by multiplying the weights by the present value of the obligation. So uh, let's go ahead now and we'll use a solver, or we'll use the Excel solver to actually solve for these weights. Okay, so notice our, the cell that we're choosing here, our objective cell here is going to be the portfolio duration and we want that to be set to this value 9.26049 right which is the same uh, as the duration of reliability okay the cells that we're going to change are just these weight cells and then we do have one constraint you'll notice this constraint says i14 equals 1 i14 is the sum of the weights here okay, it's uh, this value here the sum of the weights should add up to 100 percent um, and we also have a non-negativity constraint on the weights, meaning that we cannot short sell any of the bonds. So uh, let's go ahead and use the solver to actually compute the optimal weights. And notice all constraints and optimality conditions satisfied. And you'll look, here are our chosen weights that are optimal. 
and you'll notice that portfolio duration with these weights matches exactly the liability duration. Okay, very, very close. Uh, so what we want to do is compute the amount of money we're actually going to spend um, with these weights. So all we're going to do is we're going to multiply the weight by the original value of the liability in the present value terms. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so really we're doing two things. We're matching to start out with the net present value of the liability to the net present value of the portfolio, and we're also matching the durations. Um, what this does is it actually immunizes the portfolio against what I'm going to refer to as a parallel shift in the yield curve. Okay, so, we're, so we're assuming here that when interest rates change, they're affecting each of our assets regardless of their durations. They're affecting the yields by the same amount. Okay, so you'll notice again, when I had changed this to 50 basis point change in the interest rates, hey, it changed the yields on each asset by, um, by half a percentage point. Okay, in general, it's possible that the yields on these assets don't change by the same amount. So just to be clear, uh, what we're doing today is we're, we're immunizing against first order effects in a parallel yield curve shift. So we're only immunizing by matching duration. Um, if you wanted to do a better job of immunizing the portfolio, you could, could actually add another constraint uh, that the convexity of the portfolio matches the convexity of liability. Um, so you could go ahead and improve upon the way that we've actually immunized this portfolio by also matching convexities. Um, it adds one more constraint to the problem, but it can easily be done uh, as we've done before um, because the convexity of the portfolio is nothing more than the weighted average of the convexities of its assets. So just like we had matched durations, we could also have matched convexity. Um, what I'm going to do next is actually compute the quantity of each of these bonds that needs to be chosen in the portfolio. So how many bonds do we need? Well, I'm going to take the total amount we have to spend divided by the price of the bond. That's going to tell me how many each to buy. Okay, so again, uh, this is, you can think of the quantity as my alternative choice variable here, alternative to the weight. This is the actually nominal amount of bonds I should buy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these quantities down into my counterfactual portfolio here. Don't freak out. I know it says they're in percentages here, but let me just go format that cell. Okay, so there's a quantity of bonds purchased. And to compute the present value of the counterfactual portfolio, when we allow interest rates to float, I'm just going to take the quantity of the bonds times their price. And right now you'll notice the portfolio, the counterfactual portfolio matches the original portfolio. Okay, however, if I allow the um, interest rate to float, suppose the interest rate goes up by 50 basis points. So we, again, we have a parallel yield curve shift here. You'll notice the portfolio net present value has now been reduced. As we know from our discussion, net present value is when interest rates go up, net present value goes down. But you'll notice it doesn't quite go down by as much as the liability had been reduced. So uh, they do move in the same directions, but there is a slight difference, and we can actually track that here. Let's take the portfolio's present value minus the liabilities. Okay, so we can see a 50 uh, basis point increase in the interest rate. So a change in the yield by half of a percentage point um, caused the value of the portfolio to change from that of the liabilities by about $200. Now, if I was to choose some weights that were different than the optimal weights, okay, suppose we put 33%, we evenly distribute the weights on each bond in the portfolio. <clears throat> now you'll notice the value of the portfolio has changed from that of the liability by about $15,000. So a much bigger variation between those values and we've allowed the interest rate to float here. Okay, so again, let me uh, undo the changes. These were the optimal values. You should put about 10% in the first bond, about 60% in bond two, and about 30% in bond number three. Okay, so again, uh, what I've showed you how to do here today was to immunize a bond portfolio to changes in the value of a liability to control for the first order effects using uh, only the duration uh, against changes in the interest rate. Um, so if you have any questions, again, please uh, don't hesitate to email me um, and make sure, again, your yields are beating the yields on your liability uh, and good luck.